hosts, His Excellency President Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya, and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, and Her Excellency, the First Lady, Madam Rachel Ruto, our distinguished guests, their majesties, King Charles III and Queen Camilla. Your Excellency, the Right Honorable James Cleverly, Secretary of State for Foreign, Commonwealth and Development Affairs, Honorable Speakers of both Houses of the National Assembly, the Honorable Chief Justice, Madam Martha Kome, Excellencies. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor and great privilege to welcome their majesties, King Charles III and Queen Camilla to our country and for their excellencies, the president and the first lady to host your majesties for this state dinner. His majesty, the king, is no stranger to this country. Having previously visited Kenya in 1971, 1978, and in 1987, However, this is the first time that His Majesty is making the first visit to Kenya as king and His Majesty's first visit as a monarch to, the common, to a Commonwealth country. Indeed, the choice of Kenya as Your Majesty's first Commonwealth country to visit since Your Majesty's accession to the royal throne is both significant and historic. This visit also comes on the back of His Majesty the King and Her Majesty Queen Camilla, hosting over 400 members of the Kenya United Kingdom community at Buckingham Palace last Tuesday. All these dovetail appropriately with the warm, cordial, and historical ties between Kenya and the United Kingdom and Your Majesty's people-centered approach to issues. It is now my pleasure and privilege to welcome our host, His Excellency, President Dr. William Ruto, and President of the Republic of Kenya, and Commander-in-Chief of the Kenya Defense Forces. Karibu sana, Your Excellency. Your Majesty, King Charles III, Your Majesty Queen Camilla, distinguished guests, I am delighted to have this opportunity once more to convey to you what an honor it is to receive and host you in Kenya as you make your fifth visit and the first since your coronation. It is our hope that through our world-renowned hospitality and the Kenyan people's spirit of enterprise and innovation, as well as the land's scenic beauty and tourist charm, our country will live up to its reputation as magical Kenya and exceed your expectations. In due course, you will have occasion to tour many areas of great personal significance for you and your family, and many others of equal historic significance and importance for both our countries. You will witness the immense accomplishments made by Kenya and the United Kingdom during six decades of strong, dynamic, and fruitful bilateral relations, as well as exemplary events which took place over seven decades ago. We note with deep admiration your commitment to the conservation of biodiversity and climate action, the youth, and innovation. We know you intend to continue on your visionary path of progressive and futuristic leadership in restoring the vitality of our planet and promoting shared prosperity in the Commonwealth and beyond. A good example is the Mao Forest Complex, a water tower 
forming the catchment area for the Mara River that supports the world famous Maasai Mara ecosystem and which was admitted to the Queen's Commonwealth Canopy Program in 2020. We also note with appreciation your expression of willingness to acknowledge the painful aspects of our shared history, your exemplary courage and readiness to shed light on uncomfortable truths that reside in the darker regions of our shared experience are also very commendable. This is a highly encouraging first step under your leadership to deliver progress beyond tentative and equivocal half measures of past years. We are therefore confident that under your visionary leadership, the Kenya-United Kingdom relations will continue to prosper for the benefit of our two countries and peoples. We also note your commitment to the Commonwealth and the will to sustain the transformational momentum to make it an exemplary community of nations distinguished by unity of purpose, inclusive progress, and shared prosperity. Your visit, therefore, provides us with an opportunity to close ranks within the Commonwealth family in order to provide an inspiring beacon of hope in the possibility of transformative collective action on an ambitious and global scale. Our confidence is borne further out by the fact that you are a veteran visionary who desired long ago that global development should take into account environmental sustainability. And as early as in 1970, spoke about the menace of pollution and climate change with an urgency and intensity now associated with climate action activists and the Secretary General of the United Nations. Your Majesty, although it has been indicated that Kenya and the United Kingdom are celebrating 60 years of diplomatic relations, this by no means implies that our peoples were total strangers before that. Neither does it mean that we live in denial of our history. We cannot live as prisoners of the past. Neither can we go far into the future if we turn our backs on history and historical actions and omissions whose legacies encumber our present. As a matter of fact, formal British presence in Kenya was proclaimed in 1897 by an order in council which inaugurated European settlement and the displacement, dispossession, and disenfranchisement of native Africans, paving the way for a brutal colonialism. And if colonialism was brutal and atrocious to African people, colonial reaction to African struggles for sovereignty and self-rule was monstrous in its cruelty. It culminated in the emergency, which intensified the worst excesses of colonial impunity and the indiscriminate victimization of Africans. I took you through earlier today the whole of fame and the whole of shame. While there has been efforts to atone for the death, injury, and suffering inflicted on Kenyan Africans by colonial government, much remains to be done in order to achieve full reparations. I am optimistic that through the Kenya-UK partnership, we shall keep up our endeavor to inspire the change we hope for by making people and their well-being the fundamental consideration in our pursuit of trade and investment, defense and security, conservation 
and climate action, research, development, and innovation, as well as our work of designing a future that works for present generations and distant prosperity. I trust that this visit focused on community, sustainability, and innovation as pillars of progress will inspire your majesty to forge ahead with a strong vision for stronger Kenya-United Kingdom partnership and of the Commonwealth as a beacon of hope for humanity in a sustainable, prosperous future for all in a clean and clean planet. I wish you great success on this visit and much delight during your stay in Kenya. May your leadership inspire many to do their part in making our nations more prosperous and our planet more livable for humanity and all forms of life which share it with us. Ladies and gentlemen, I did inform His Majesty earlier that in Kenya there is a concept called kingpin and there is a contest for kingpins around Kenya. Different regions have different kingpins. And there is a vicious contest for this kingpin uh, position, which literally amounts to not so much. But this week, all contests about kingpins have been suspended <laughs> because the king himself is in town. Let us drink to the long life and good health of His Majesty King Charles III and Her Majesty Queen Camilla, and to the enduring bonds of friendship and partnership for the shared prosperity of the people of our two great nations. Thank you. God bless you. God bless Kenya. God bless the United Kingdom. Asante Nisana. Ladies and gentlemen, let me take this opportunity now to request our guest, Your Majesty, welcome to make your statement. And I, we can take our seats. Thank you. My baby, no, my uh, I'm Jumbo. Niaje. Di Fora Yangu Kua Nani Gioni Aleo. I cannot tell you what a, a great pleasure it is for my wife and I to be back in Kenya once again. I am enormously grateful to you, Mr. President. Madam First Lady, for your uh, most generous invitation to make this state visit. The tremendous hospitality 
you have shown us and the wonderfully warm welcome that you and the people of Kenya have extended to us um, have touched me deeply. If I may say so, it is particularly special to be able to return to this extraordinary country in the 60th year of your independence. Today, Mr. President, you and I stood by the mighty uh, Mugumo tree, which marks the spot where almost 60 years ago uh, the Kenyan flag was first raised. It seemed to me that the tree is, is thriving, strong and deeply rooted, just as this great republic and her people continue to thrive. It, it means a great deal to my wife and myself that in our coronation year, our first state visit to a Commonwealth country should bring us here to Kenya. We, we both take considerable pride in renewing the ties between the United Kingdom and Kenya, a country that has long held such special meaning for my family. Najiskia Kama Niko Niumbani. Now it is well known, I think, that my dear mother, the late queen, had a particular affection for Kenya and the Kenyan people. She arrived here in 1952, a princess, but left uh, as queen. It is extremely moving to read her diary from that visit, in which she wrote that she did not want to miss a moment of Kenya's extraordinary landscapes. I really cannot thank you enough for the support Kenya gave her through that difficult time. Ten years later, my father, the late Duke of Edinburgh, attended the celebrations of Kenya's independence. To mark that, the occasion, Her Late Majesty wrote to President Jomo Kenyatta to convey her sincere hope that with God's guidance, Kenya would prosper and that her people would have peace and contentment in full measure. Nearly 50 years later, it was here uh, in sight of Mount Kenya that my son, the Prince of Wales, proposed to his wife, now my beloved daughter-in-law. For my part, I recall as if it were yesterday my first visit to Kenya in 1971 with my sister, the Princess Royal. It was, it is fair to, I was, it is fair to say, somewhat younger then and um, I can well remember the meeting I had with President Jomo Kenyatta, a towering statesman who inspired such great admiration, affection, and respect. On subsequent visits here, I was most fortunate to be able to spend some time with Kenyan conservationists from whose profound knowledge of their environment I learned so much. Among them was the late great environmentalist and Nobel Prize winner, uh, Wangari Maathai, someone whom I greatly admired and loved. And I'm very much looking forward to spending a little time with her daughter uh, this week and to planting the tree in her mother's memory. As when as Wangari Maathai said, when we plant trees, we plant the seeds of peace and seeds of hope. We also secure the future for our children. This is a sentiment that as avid dendrophiles, lovers of trees, I know, Mr. President, that you and I share. Indeed, having been planting trees for most of my life, I thought I was doing rather well, but your ambition to plant 15 billion trees makes me look rather more critically at my own efforts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my own and my family's special connections to Kenya are but one example of the myriad links between our two countries. The British people hold a deep affection for Kenya 
and visit in their tens and even hundreds of thousands every year. By the same token, I am delighted and proud that so many Kenyans choose to live, work and study in the United Kingdom. Before traveling here, my wife and I held a reception in London to celebrate the invaluable contribution of Kenyans and British Kenyans to almost every field of British life, from the arts to medicine to academia. I was as touched by their affection for the United Kingdom as I was immensely grateful for what each of them brings to my country. It is the intimacy of our shared history that has brought our people together. However, we must also acknowledge the most painful times of our long and complex relationship. The wrongdoings of the past are a cause of the greatest sorrow and the deepest regret. There were abhorrent and unjustifiable acts of violence committed against Kenyans as they waged, as you said at the United Nations, a painful struggle for independence and sovereignty. And for that, there can be no excuse. In coming back to Kenya, it matters greatly to me that I should deepen my own understanding of these wrongs and that I meet some of those whose lives and communities were so grievously affected. None of this can change the past, but by addressing our history with honesty and openness, we can perhaps demonstrate the strength of our friendship today. And in so doing, we can, I hope, continue to build an ever closer bond for the years ahead. As Jomo Kenyatta said, our children may learn about the heroes of the past. Our task is to make ourselves the architects of the future. Mr. President, in returning to Kenya, I have been struck by the many ways in which our country's relationship is now closer than ever. It is a modern partnership of equals facing today's challenges and looking to the many opportunities that together we can seize, whether by using the King's Cross regeneration as a model for the Nairobi Railway City or by learning from Kenya how the blue economy <clears throat> can really work for local communities. All of you here this evening and across our countries deserve our gratitude for your ceaseless work to realize our joint ambitions. Our people's security is a paramount concern. It is fitting, then, that Kenya's first Marine Commando Unit was established earlier this year, trained by British Royal Marines. I also look forward to visiting Karioko War Grave Cemetery, uh, where I will honor Kenyans and other Africans who died in two world wars. We must ensure all are granted the remembrance befitting their service. Kenya's efforts to address the existential challenges of climate change and biodiversity loss are remarkable. From generating over 90% of your electricity from renewable sources to ambitious reforestation and restoration programs to hosting the first Africa Climate Summit here in Nairobi last month, Kenya is offering extraordinary leadership. The Nairobi Declaration brings together different peoples whose cooperation will be essential to solve some of the serious environmental and ecological challenges not only facing us in the future, but facing us here and now. And it is, if I may say so, absolutely vital that your and Africa's voice continues to be heard, including at COP28 and beyond. Because, Mr. President, there is much we could all learn from Kenya's example. 
so that the natural world we treasure and which ultimately is our only sustainer can be preserved and above all greatly enhanced and restored for the benefit of our grandchildren and the generations that follow them. Those next generations are themselves taking remarkable strides to secure their own future. I have long believed in the extraordinary potential of our young people and left my meeting with young Kenyan and entrepreneurs today inspired by their accomplishments. It gives me great pride, therefore, that the Prince's Trust, which I established very nearly 50 years ago to support young people, is now operating in Kenya. And that in 2021, Ekalali Susan from Turkana County became the first Kenyan winner of the Trust's Global Award for her entrepreneurial efforts to help lift her family out of poverty. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, my mother, <clears throat> Her Late Majesty, cared deeply that Kenya chose to be a member of the Commonwealth and was always grateful that Kenya has played an essential role in this family of nations to which she devoted so much of her life. On this, my first state visit to a Commonwealth country, I, I wish to reaffirm my own pledge to support the Commonwealth's bold vision for action and the values upon which it rests. That one third of the world's population, united by peace, justice, tolerance, and mutual respect, should commit to protecting our environment and the most vulnerable in our societies. To this endeavor, Kenya makes a profound difference. It is here in Nairobi, for instance, that Kenya hosts the only United Nations headquarters in the Commonwealth, indeed in Africa and the Southern Hemisphere. In this, as in so much else, Kenya is helping to shape our world and forge our future. The extraordinary ingenuity of the Kenyan people fuels these endeavors. Your environmentalists and your entrepreneurs, your religious leaders, artists, scholars, soldiers and athletes, your elders and your youth. And so, Mr. President, if I may, I would like to propose a toast to you and to the people of Kenya. It is upon the enduring connection between our people that our partnership rests. It is on their enterprise, imagination, and fortitude that our common hopes depend. Together, we are stronger, Together, our future is more secure. And together, as your national anthem says, may we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Umoja ninguvu. We may now take our seats and we must commend His Majesty the King for one day's lesson. Your Kiswahili is impeccable. Dinner will now be served and as you put your